Hey guys, how you doing? Hi Mika, Rach, Daisies, lots of other people. Hi. What's that line? Oh, it's the edge of my canvas. Oh, okay. You can't normally see that. Let's. There we go. That's better. Hello, Mr. Boo. Do you want to come and say hello? Come on then. Come on up. Hello. Come on up and say hello. Come on. Come on. Come and say hello. Come and say hello. Come and say hello. Come and say hello. <laughs> Mr. Boo. Hey, Russia. Miss Maddie's here for her belly rubs. There we go. There's the belly rubs for Maddie. Ooh, 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 I know. Come up and say hello then. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Please. Please. Come on. There she is. Hi, baby. There's the Maddie. Hello, sweet pea. Good girl. You too. Come say hello. Scooby. There he is. Good boy. Such a good boy. Such a good boy. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Risha. Oh, it's good. It's looking right, actually. Um, I still haven't done the another. I've got to do another tone on the roots because you can see it's the ends are silver and the the roots are very very white. But against the the root, but against the ends, they look silver. The so this looks gold. It's hard to explain. It wouldn't look... This would look white if this wasn't here. So I've got to do some more on the ends. But my hairdresser, uh, because my pixie has got a little bit out of control, uh, is fix, fitting me in on Friday. So I'm not going to do the roots until I know how much of it actually needs doing because she might chop out so much of it because this has got all really heavy here so she might chop off so much of it that i don't actually need to do the roots again so we'll see we'll see on friday i can wait till friday uh, and if i decide i don't like it uh, i've had a lot of people messaging me going yeah the white looks lovely but you're going to color it again well of course i'm going to color it again i've spent my <laughs> my entire life coloring my hair uh, i had no intention of going white it just happened and I liked it and I thought, oh, I'll keep that for a bit. Uh, I was actually going blue again. <laughs> but when you have a happy accident, you know, people spend a fortune at hairdressers trying to get this colour. And I did it by accident, so I thought I'd use it. Anyway, let's get going for today. Uh, I'm going to talk, show you my bullet journal as promised. Uh, it's actually not really a jour bullet journal anymore. It's more of a my journal with bullet journaling in it, if that makes sense. Um, but first, let me show you. Boom. Finished this one this morning over on Twitch. It's available as a replay. This is the fifth part of it. So... Um, yeah, finished doing all the detailing on the buildings today. Those of you who couldn't really see it because I had the studio light on, you can now see a lot of the detail in the buildings and things. And you can see a lot more detail in it. And it's got shiny bits and metallic bits and 3D bits. Look at that shine. And all sorts. Love that moon. Yep, so... Very happy with that one. That's finished. Need to get some, need to get scans done of all these big ones and then I can put prints up. Haven't been able to do that yet, but. So if you want to catch the replay of that, the sessions are available over on Twitch. Uh, I'm Romany over there, not Romany's Realm. 
Okay, journal. You've had a flip of my journal before, so I'm not going to do the whole thing again. I'm going to start at November. You've all seen my journals before, you've all seen my planning before, and I think it will be obvious what's changed and what hasn't and how I've managed to integrate the two. I talked yesterday about how um, Ryder's book had clued me in to the fact that A, bullet journaling is not about planning, it's about journaling, which was a light bulb moment for me. Uh, li quite literally, you know, the guy from D Despicable Me, light bulb, that was me, uh, nose and all. Uh, it's a way of recording what's happened, what you want to happen. Hey, hey, hey. Um what you're doing, how you're doing it, and all sorts of other things. It's not just a to-do list. And I kind of knew that already, but I guess I kind of needed somebody to actually say it to me. <laughs> um, sorry if the camera is jiggling about a little bit. The dogs are playing under the desk. So we've got jiggles happening. Never work with children or animals. Anyway. I have previously tried. Will you stop it, please? Take it outside. Hey, hey, hey. Take it outside, outside, out. Go on, take it out in the kitchen. <laughs> Crazy. Sounds like, it sounds like they're trying to kill each other. They're just playing. Believe it or not. me back take it out in the kitchen go on out out <laughs> sorry um yeah it's it's journaling not planning <clears throat> it's logging things with intention that was another key point logging things with intention which again already knew i'm a journaler it's kind of what i do um hadn't really fully appreciated that that needed to be part of bullet journaling. Ugh, dog hair. Hang on. Ew. <laughs> also, there's a bit in the bullet journal that I think I mentioned this yesterday. He says, anything that you put in your bullet journal should have a purpose or intention it should add to your bullet journal and your life not just be extra things that you carry around and it should be a quick way of capturing all the crazy things that are going around around you in your head, inside you, all the stuff that you th you want to remember, you want to get done, you want to dream about, you want to think about, you want to have ideas for, everything, all the mishmash, all the, what I call white noise, can go and be filtered into this. Now, previously, I... I'm not going to go into this too much detail. There are plenty of videos on my channel. Go and look at my planner playlist. In particular, there is an hour long look at my bullet journal when I was doing it as part of a uh, archiving system as well. I was working with Evernote to turn it into a, a way of capturing things both on paper and digitally. So, you know, there's plenty of, of ways to see what I used to do. Um, but issues I've had previously was that I wanted to put everything together so that I only had one book to carry around with me. Again, the principle of less decisions. 
which book do I take with me to go out on a coffee day or go out on a sketching day or do this or do that? I don't, I don't, I don't have to think about that. I just take this one. Um, and in my car, I have my sketchbook, my big sketchbook. So if I want to do some urban sketching, I've got bigger paper in there dedicated to it. So it's eliminated that need to keep making decisions that I don't really want to have to keep making. I just want to chuck my stuff in my bag and go, go and do what I have to do, get back, snuggle with my dogs, you know. I also used to have issues, and I mentioned this on several of occasions, where I didn't like the fact that it kind of felt like, obviously it wasn't, but it, it does automatically make you feel like you have to do a page a day or at the very least two pages over two days so I would fall automatically simply because I'm working on a piece of paper I would automatically fall into the trap of here's where I put my time stamp here's where I put my to-do list here's where I always put my date here's where I always put this here's where I always put that and it got so boring to you know both to do and visually to always have the same format all the time i'm creative i want to play with it i want to do different things um and i think i finally managed to do it by integrating the for want of a better word tips that Ryder puts in his book that were not obvious before so I started doing it at the beginning of November <clears throat> and based on something he said that I can't remember exactly what it was, but I think it was something, I think it was part of the, but is it useful to put it in? I think that's one of his questions. Hey Burgess, one of his questions is, is it useful to write this in my journal? Um, normally when I change systems or when I change formats rather because I don't really change my system particularly I will always take the previous week especially if I'm part way through a month I will always change, take the previous week now I was on about the 10th, 9th or 10th uh, the Bujo book arrived on Sunday the 11th so I was 11 days into November already I did not go back and put the whole first 10 days of November in, in the way that I thought it should be. I just carried on from where I had left off. So actually the previous day is the journaling for the 7th and 8th. Yeah, 7th and 8th. So... On the 11th, I just said, well, you know what? I'm just going to start it here. I'm not going to backtrack. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to start from here and keep go on. That in itself is a revelation for me because I usually feel better getting everything in its little niche. And on this occasion, I didn't feel like it needed to have a niche. So that was a big... You know, already we're away from that idea of, oh, but I have to set it out like this. So I started off simple. I, I followed him through the book. Uh, he says start with rapid logging, but obviously I've done that before and I need my monthly list because I teach. I do all sorts of things. I do not have, hey, Chloe from Portugal. I do not have time, hello, Ina, to be messing about with not being able to find what I'm doing so I put the calendar in and said right this is going to be the log of what has already happened so you'll notice that it's being filled in as I go or it was being filled in as I go as I went I think I missed a couple of bits and pieces at the end here I was sick at the end of November uh, for a couple of days so I actually missed a couple of days of going back and revising but you know there's nothing stopping me doing it now just going back and filling things in hey Toby so this is my log of things 
that I filled in as it went. And so I filled in the bits that happened before the ninth, then I filled in these bits and then I got sick so I didn't fill in the last week. Journaling. And you'll spot this as we go through. Bullet journaling. So literally, I had this photo. I wanted to journal about it. I stuck the photo in. I journaled about it. The next thing that I came to my book to do was Friday the 9th's list of what I needed to do. And I almost, almost fell into the trap straight away of starting with this is what I need to do today. Boom, 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 boom. Straight away. Oh, it's a to do list. Let's write what I have to do today. And I, I stopped myself and said, no, what is important about today that I need to write down? Uh, so the very first thing that I, I wrote down was an event, an important event. It was a half day. I was owed a half day from work and I was jolly well going to take it. Um, and the thing is, the, the reason and he does address this in his in his book. Why is it important before you put your to do list down to write down that you've got a half day? By which I mean I worked the morning and I didn't work the afternoon. I was owed some hours and I was jolly well going to have them. Why is that important? Well, because what you're doing that day as far as how many hours you're spending at work where you're going, what you're doing, who you're spending time with, is going to set both the intention for the day and the mood for the day. There is nothing better than getting up and starting your daily log with half day today. Already you're like, Whoa, that's halved my to-do list. <laughs> and you're already in a good mood. Plus it's Friday. Awesome. So straight away, my entire mood lifted because I was like, oh, doesn't matter how many things I've got listed that I could do today. I can only do so much because I'm only working till two. Yes. So based on that, I wrote a list of things that I knew I needed to do that I, I could fit into that. Um, that morning schedule that four hour schedule then i set up a list of things that i wanted to do but i put them in as notes i didn't do them as to do's let me show you so this is my to do list as you can see two of them i didn't actually get done um, because i have to do something else uh, in fact, I haven't moved them across either, so I need to I need to come back and well, I've got to come back and do this anyway, so I will. Uh, those didn't get moved forward. I missed those. This I did I did get done. Then part way through, um, part way through the twitch session in the morning, I decided I was going to do a Q and a journal with me the following week for one of my classes. So I put that in next week, Q&A, journal with me. Note, not to do, note, need to work out 2019 setup. Note, video edits, catch up and organise. Note, try YouTube and then a, a suggestion for when I could do alternate days or whatever. I could have put those in for t as to do's, but again, I I took inspiration from the way Ryder phrased it in his book. Would it have been useful to put those in as to do's? No, it was a half day. I wasn't going to get them done. Just the first one is a big job. Obviously, they're going to need a lot more room than that, a lot more time than that. So therefore, they're probably things that I need to schedule. One of them I've already scheduled. The other three I haven't scheduled, but I know that they're there and I know that I need to do them. 
but they're not in my brain. Every time I come back to this page, I look at it and go, I need to, I need to organise those. And in fact, the video editing, catch up and organise, I've already started organising a collection for that because I, f I figured out rather than one to do list, it would be better to have a collection. Uh, and my collection is digital because it needs to be accessed by somebody else. So not only did I save myself thinking about a to-do and, and trying to fit it all in, I realised by the time I'd come back to it and said, oh yeah, I need to do that, do something about that. Video edits need to be catched up and all. Hang on a minute. KK's going to need access to that. I'm going to need to add her. I'm going to need to make sure that she can access it. She can access it if it's in here. So I put it online. Would it have been useful to put it in my journal? Nope. <laughs> well, it might have been for me, but it wouldn't have been for her. I would have ended up doing it again. So I think the lesson from that is that rather than just getting up and writing a to-do list while I heaved down a cup of coffee, I intentionally sat there and thought about what was going on, what was on my mind, what was I thinking about? And I intentionally said, you know, I don't have time to deal with that today. I'm just going to put it as a note to deal with it again at some other point. And because I did that, I saved myself work. Because I didn't have to copy things out. I didn't have to do things twice, etc, etc, etc. Moral of the story, measure twice, cut once, as my dad would say. <laughs> Uh, then I was listening to something uh, with oh Professor Stephen Hawking was doing on a TED talk came up, and there was a really good quote from him. It's one of my favourite quotes. Uh, I was reminded that it's awesome. Uh, we are all just an advanced breed of monkey on a minor planet of a very average star, but we can understand the universe, and that makes us very special. And I like that quote, so I wrote it in my journal. So already my journal is not looking like, oh, this is my to do list. It's becoming a log. Now you have to think about it. In, or I did. I had to think about it intentionally in order to stop it becoming a to do list. You'll see on Saturday I had a bit more trouble because Saturday was a day of doing stuff. Um, incidentally, the stickers for the days and the dates. Um, I, I don't want to detract from my thinking and thought process and planning by doing the lettering myself. I'm too lazy as well. Um, and I like my planner bits to look not the same, but uniform so that I know that that particular writing means that that's bullet journaling. Uh, so I'm using Courtney... Uh, Little Raven Inks collage sheets for those uh, and I've changed to a Christmas theme this month obviously uh, so that's helping to just when I'm flipping through and I'm looking at you know pages of writing it's very easy to see which bits are journaling and which bits are bullet journaling because I only use these headers for bullet journal days and that is the extent of the colouring and highlighting and everything else I've done away with the colours. I used to use colour coding, like I used to use uh, highlighters for everything. And I've always used highlighters for everything. That's something I've done since I was 12 and I discovered highlighters. Um, work or school or anything like that, whatever my main duty is, has always been orange. Pink has always been my out of school activities, etc. Uh, purple has always been personal stuff. Yellow has been appointments where I have to actually go somewhere. Blue has been boring stuff like cleaning and admin. It's always been like that. And um, it's gone. Why is it gone? Go on, somebody has a guess as to why. Oh, my coffee's empty. Based on what I've already said, why do you think... I've done away with the colour coding. Anyone? I've got to sit and wait now because there's lag. Sorry. So, you know, 
pretend I'm doing something entertaining. <laughs> while we wait for somebody to answer. <laughs> I tell you what, while we're waiting for somebody to come up with why they think I might have done away with my colour coding, uh, I'll show you this because this is this is one of the things that I wish I hadn't done in the way that I've done it. But it was too late now, so I've learned a lesson. I'll do it differently next time. This is a, a little pullout from uh, one of the Hobonichi Techos that I had a spare few months. I renamed the months. I stuck the labels on. And this is my calendar schedule. Now, I did say uh, uh, Ryder. I nearly called him Carol. Ryder mentions that he has a calendar, a schedule. And he only mentions it in passing. I wish he'd made more of a thing of it because it would have made more sense. Uh, but he'll say, you know, like if I've got an event that's timed, when I migrate it, I take it out and put it on my schedule, which implies he's got an extra outside of something. Um, now, I need a schedule because I have specific times that I do things because I teach. Uh, I could not function without a timetable. But I thought a monthly list like this would be the easiest way to do it because it doesn't have to have information on it. All it needs is for me to know what days I'm working, what days I've got an afternoon appointment or a morning appointment so that I know that I have to get up early. What days do I have to leave the house? What days have I got something that is not related to work? That kind of stuff. Uh, so I literally have just... I wrote in all my classes because they're pre-scheduled. I wrote in all my Twitch. I worked out when my admin meetings were going to be for the month. I added in impertinent information that was very important. Uh, and I also use this, um, you'll see it more here, where this is my future log as well. Because there's plenty of space around the outside of here to, to jot down dates. So in November, I wrote down my last posting dates for December. Did I need a collection for it? No. Um, I, my friend graduates and take her, takes her board certification exams. So I put that in as that's happening in December, but at the time I didn't know the date. So I put it in there. Now I know the date. I can put it on the calendar. Uh, and I knew my Spotify was due for renewal in week two so i've put that there so this is my forward planning as well as my schedule he uses the app for the bujo which has a calendar oh, okay he has an app i didn't know he had an app i need to check that out why doesn't it say in the book that there's an app i use um do it tomorrow it's it's on um it's on all platforms but you have to pay for it on ios which is really annoying uh, it's free on android uh and it literally is a two-page spread you put things in on this page and if you don't tick them off they carry on forward to tomorrow so it's great for stuff that you know you want to do at some point but you haven't scheduled it okay so suggestions for highlighting it wasn't useful it was a distraction it made it more of a to-do list and now it isn't. You don't need highlighters because you're writing out tasks, not organising them. Yeah, all of the above. It was no longer useful to highlight stuff and say, well, this is for work, this is for work, this is for home, this is for this, this is for that, because it's all just stuff for my day. I no longer felt like I needed to categorise things as work or home because they're all going in one place on the same day. So instead of being this list is for home, this list is for YouTube, this list is for work, this list is for class, it's now this section is for Friday the 9th. Therefore, no highlighters required. Uh, it is still occasionally useful to work out how long I've spent on doing things, but 
simply highlighting them on the list doesn't really tell me how long. Um, so what I've got is a, uh, what's it called? Justin sent me some traveller's notebook inserts that I've got Hyperdex, no, Chronodex in. Um, and it's got six Chronodex for the week. I don't fill it in every day. I just do it on days where I feel like, oh, I feel like I've done a lot of whatever today, or I feel like I've spent a lot of time not really getting anything done today. Where have I made progress? If I have one of those days, I will go and say, okay, what did I do today? I did that. That took about 50 minutes. That took about an hour. That took Those three together took about 20 minutes. Then I took a break for lunch. And I will colour the thing in through I took an hour and a half to do this in orange this was for work and then I took lunch which is personal time and then I can see visually did I really spend the entire day from 9 a.m till 10 o'clock at night working or did it did it just feel like that because I left everything to the last minute and usually what I find is that I started late so I was flustered before I even started I didn't take lunch, I ended up working through and I overworked is usually what happens. So I end up with a big chunk of orange and the only breaks are when I take the dogs out or I go for a coffee. And that taught me a valuable lesson, a much more valuable lesson than just highlighting things in my journal. Maybe it's a group app because he said an online calendar. It's only available for iPhone. Oh, right. Well, I've got an iPhone. I'll have a look and see. It's probably really expensive. Apple. Uh, why is Apple Store charge for everything? Why does Apple Store charge for everything except their own apps? I need to know this. There's hardly any free apps. And all the stuff that's free on Android, you're charged for on iPhone. Don't get it. Um, you can't blame the Apple Store because the prices are set by the developers. So... Why is it more expensive on iPhone than on Android? I need to know this. I just went downstairs to get something to drink very quietly because there are people sleeping here already. And I had my phone against my ear just to make sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> you need headphones, honey. Headphones. Put your... Put your dingle dangles in and take it with you. I really need to read the book because I'm not sure what to do when I brain spill. I know there's no way I can do them all, but I need to write them all out. Oh, no, he talks about that. He has a system for doing it. He's got two things. One is called it, one is in the section called decluttering. The Bujo app is free. Nice one, Ryder. Good lad. Um. He talks about that. He does two different things. One where you write down what you are doing, what you should be doing and what you want to be doing. And one where you just take a sheet of paper and write down everything until your brain is empty. That took me a while. But the thing is, and this is where it, this is where the white noise for me stopped and I realised this is why it works is because you don't have to do a brain dump because you don't use it like a normal planner where you wake up in the morning and you plan your day and then you just follow the instructions. You have this with you all day. And if you need to make a note of something, you do it and you take as much space for the day as you need. So if you're sitting there and having a coffee and suddenly your your brain taps into the white noise of the universe and goes, oh, guess what? You should do this and you should do this and you should do this and you should do this. And da, 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 da. You can write all that down today as a note, because the point of it is you don't go, oh, I need to write down a list of all the Christmas presents I need to buy. You put on here, create Christmas collection, which you already know will include all the cards and presents you need to buy, all the places you need to be, all the stuff you need to do, 
where you're going, who you who you're going with, all that kind of stuff, your budget, everything. You'll do that all in one section, but it means that you put it aside until you have time to concentrate on it. So you just do that one thing and it helps you focus on one thing. But if you wake up in the morning and you start your rapid log with, you know, what is important today and what have I got in my brain? Boom. There you go. That's what you do it. Do with it. I woke up Monday and I wrote 36 things. Yeah, I do that on a Monday morning because I've switched off over the weekend. Monday morning, my brain is like the, the chattering monkeys. That's why I don't work Monday mornings. I sit all morning with my journal and my planners and I start making lists of what I need to do, how I'm going to do it. Well, I don't know, but that's what I did do. I used to spend Monday morning was my planning and scheduling morning. Now I wake up every morning and that's the first thing I do. Now, the, the thing about doing that is because you reduce the amount of backlog that if you only do it once a week you know you wake up monday morning and you do a big chunk a big brain dump then you get busy as he likes to call it um busy is not um sorry i'm i'm trying to read and talk at the same time and i shouldn't i shouldn't try and read i should read in a minute um busy doesn't mean productive busy often means i think he calls it functional overwhelm if you feel busy it usually means you're not getting anything done You've, you're overwhelmed already you're already on the way to stress um and i have to say since i started doing this unless i've allowed myself to stop doing this and lost track I've not felt busy or overwhelmed or missed a deadline or procrastinated or anything. I just I just do it. But because you don't get that backlog of things, you don't then have it all backed up on a Friday. So you end up writing a list on a Friday and then you take the weekend off and your subconscious goes through those lists that you wrote that you haven't finished and all those to do lists that you wrote that you haven't done and you haven't finished and you haven't crossed off and then you wake up on monday morning and boom there are the monkeys again you don't do that you do it every single not just daily you it's the first thing you do when you get up but you do it all day every day your bullet journal is a brain dump And when I realised that, that made a huge amount of difference. I've never, never done much with lettering, but I'm just about to start. I've just ordered, the, ordered bullet journal. Um, lettering is not part of bullet journaling. Lettering is something else. Um, who's that girl who does the lettering? What's her name? Ink, ink and quill? Pen and quill? Oh, Mitz's friend on Instagram. Come on, somebody must know her name. Mitz will watch this later. What's what's your friend's name on Instagram that does all the lovely brush lettering? Just go on Instagram and look up bullet journaling and there's all sorts of little five minute tutorials on doing lettering and stuff. If that's the kind of lettering you want to do. I'm a big proponent of just using your own handwriting and making it fancy. Could you share the notebook and cover you're using and the pen? Well, I can, but it won't do you any good. This is my Ravenclaw TN in moleskin large size. It's specifically made to fit five moleskin Kayes because that's what I used to use. Um, but it also fits the five moleskin Kayes are, are approximately half an A5 book. That will be important in a moment. Uh, I have a cameo charm on there that I think Amber sent me that. Or did Amber send... No, man, Amber sent me my earrings. I can't remember who sent me this one. It might have been Sharon. If you sent me this, put it in the comments so I remember. You know me, bad with names, worse with faces. I've got my little German Shepherd sparkle that reminds me of my gypsy girl. 
This is from Phoenix Willow Designs, which is Kate B, the perpetual student, Kate B TPS on YouTube. Uh, I don't know if she's still doing these. She's very, very bogged down with doing a master's. But she was intending to make these as one of a kind things. Um, I don't know if she ever started it or if she got around to doing it or whatever, because she was really busy and this one alone took her nearly three months to make. So I don't know if she actually went ahead with it. It was something that she wanted to do and she wanted to try, but she didn't want to launch it as a business or something until she knew she could actually do it. Um, I have done a review on this. In fact, I think it was Vlogmas. 2016 yeah vlogmas 2016 i believe there is a video on phoenix willow designs where i actually opened this and show you it and talk you through everything about it um i'm a ravenclaw in case you hadn't noticed uh, it's got two secretarial pockets in the front it's got a secretarial pocket in the back it's a one-of-a-kind design, that's her logo, uh, so no, you can't have one, and I don't even know if she's still making one-of-a-kind designs, so you'd have to ask her. I think she probably would, if, if you have a specific thing in mind and you're not in any particular rush to get it, she probably still will make you one. Um, but I, I love this thing, look how beat up it's getting. Isn't it fab? It's awesome. I think I spilled some paint on it there. Some ink or something, I don't know. Uh, my book itself is, I mentioned this the other day, it is a half of a Collins Debden legacy notebook, which is very similar to uh, Leuchtturm 1917, but it's an English brand. So if you're in England, you can get these on Amazon for about £3.50. If you're not in England, I don't even know if you can get them. I love the paper. And I took the bind binding off, split it in two, made two soft cover notebooks. And I've got one soft cover notebook in here. As you can see, half the book, it's going to be about right for half the book. Uh, I'm up to here. Since I've started bullet journaling, I'm going through pages a little bit quicker, uh, but that's OK. Uh, my pen is, again, probably a disappointment. It is a Jin Hao 992 with the extra fine hooded lid. Jin Hao, J-I-N-H-A-O. Uh, they're a Japanese brand and I got it for a whopping 84p on eBay. Yeah. Uh, something you'll learn if you're not familiar with it already around here is that unless it is specific art materials that I've purchased because they are archival quality or artist's grade or whatever, I very rarely spend a lot of money on anything. I'm not a brand person. I don't have 200 notebooks. I've got this. I've got another one identical, but in this colour that Ray Blake made me as a gift that I've got my actual planner and diary in. My planner and diary is only for work and it's only to record what we've done in classes. It's very specific. Uh, which is why I won't show you because it includes student names and stuff where people have asked me for things or asked me questions or whatever. Um, but it's basic. It's very, very basic. It's just the schedule, the list of stuff we've done, whether I've transferred those videos or not, and any notes that come out of classes. That's all it is. Um, Walmart has some that are about $5. So does Michael's. They're hardcover and come dot and lined. Yeah, this is um, this is cl plain. That's why I like it. It's very thin paper. It feels like moleskin paper. But as you can see from me writing on it, I write on it with platinum carbon ink. And yeah, it ghosts, but it doesn't bleed, which is very important for me. I don't like pages that bleed. Um, it also takes watercolour and, you know, sticking stuff on and all sorts of 
stuff if that's what I want to do or I can draw on it in pencil or I can stick things in whatever and it works so yeah sorry you won't find a lot of brand names hanging around my channel I I don't I don't bandwagon jump that doesn't mean I'm not willing to try things out I'm just like you know, everybody starts talking about, oh, a B6 Stalogy. Oh, look at this, B6 Stalogy. That's suddenly the buzzword. And I went online and looked at the B6 Stalogy and looked at how much it would cost me to get one and looked at what the alternatives were and I went, yeah, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> you know, I love Rowena. I do. She's great. I love her channel. I love looking at her notebooks. I was very intrigued by the lovely mint and cream one that miss vicky b has that i think she's doing a video about very shortly she posted it on her instagram so i'm sure she will i'm very intrigued i love watching other people's but i don't feel the need to own any myself i don't particularly need one i wouldn't mind owning a sojourner i think they're beautiful and she does a great job on them but i don't need one because i've got this if i had more of these I would simply be adding to the list of decisions I had to make about which journal to use. It's going back to what we were talking about yesterday, you see. Anyway, yeah, this is my forward planning and my schedule. But like I say, I've got a work schedule that's completely separate. It's a completely separate little calendar, similar to similar book to this, but big size. So I can write in it and scribble in it. And it's not pretty at all. It's just scribbles and crossings out. And then I've suddenly got some journaling because I was halfway through doing this. I knew I wanted to put this in here and I thought, well, I'll skip that page. I'll stick that in in a minute and I'll go and do my journaling over here. Are you still using your Filofax for anything? I use everything for it all the time for stuff. The one you MacGyvered the back of. Which one I MacGyvered the back of? Because I've done that several times with various different filofaxes. I do that a lot. I've got my little one, my little pocket one, that I use for my financial planner, which I took the rings out of. Is that the one you mean? Turned it into a TN, Traveller's Notebook. It always makes it always makes me laugh when people say, oh, well, you're not using the other thing that you were using the other. What about that one? What are you using that for? Uh, aren't you doing that one? Aren't you doing this? Aren't you doing that? What what happened to this? And I'm like, well, just because I'm not using it as my journal doesn't mean I'm not using it. The one that held my tablet, it still holds my tablet. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know, I know that, that might sound... No, 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 I, I appreciate you asking. I, I, I love it when people ask questions. It's great. But I always find it fascinating that... that there's an assumption that because you've got something different that you're now not using something else all of my filofaxes are used for something i've got one as an address book i've got one that is my all my dog's paperwork and checkups and things i've got one that's my financial stuff you know i don't have a lot of people would have boxes or folders full of papers and things i don't i use my filofaxes for that and then my traveller's notebooks are for note-taking and diary. But again, I don't remember the last time I bought a Filofax. I've still only got... I think the last Filofax I had was the one that Jane Davenport sent me, actually, to try. Yeah, my giant book of shadows is still being used. One's out. My A5 Fusion is out there full of herb notes and stuff. My little... Not little. My B6 four inch thick is over there because I've been writing in it yesterday <laughs> unless the book's finished I'm still using it or unless it's fallen apart I'm still using it because again unlike a lot of people I don't feel the need to keep going out and buying the latest thing I've been using this as my journal now since I got it which was two years ago almost exactly I haven't used anything else Does that make sense? <laughs> I 
yes, I still use everything for the original purpose it was intended for. I don't buy lots and lots of traveller's notebooks, so I've got 15 different um, covers that I can use as journals. This is why when a lot of companies, unless it's a specific planner setup or like insert type stuff, you know, when it's just covers and things, there are plenty of people like Miss Vicky B, um, Courtney, Carrie, they do amazing unboxing videos and reviews of leather products and stuff like that or you know anything that's new like that that comes out and people contact them and say look i'm bringing out a new one do you want to do you want to try it do you want to because they change it all the time and they love doing that i don't need to be in that group i don't feel the need to keep changing my cover all the time i've got this i love this i don't want to keep changing it I don't want to feel guilty for not using it because it's sitting in a cupboard with 15 others that I don't have time to use because I can only use one at a time. You know, I just don't feel the need. Inserts I'm always willing to try because inserts are different. But covers, anytime anybody uh, contacts me and says, would you like me to make you a cover? Pretty much no. Thank you appreciate the offer but no there's plenty of other people who will appreciate it more it's just a waste for me to have more than one or two um i did do this one for kate but kate's a friend of mine so does that make sense <laughs> that makes sense i have nothing against people who want to buy loads of different things or try lots of different things or you know, most of them actually review things or they do trades to get them. And that's perfectly fine. But that's not what I do. I, I just I don't feel the need to do that. I'm not interested in that. I'm not. I'd rather try lots of different paper. If you make inserts and you want me to try your paper and put it through the mill. Absolutely. I'm game for that because I love trying different papers. But covers i've got a cover why do i need another one i made my own cover for a traveler's notebook and have been using it for two and a half years already yeah my first one that i made myself um my friends actually got it now because i was sent another one I was just wondering because you haven't done vids like those in a long time yeah because i don't need to i don't need to do unboxing videos of my new tn cover all the time because i don't have one <laughs> this is the last one i did two years ago I haven't really been around to doing videos very much. Anyway, we got off track. Let's rope it back in, shall we? We're all, we're an hour again already. I'm getting a reputation for being a rambler because you guys keep pulling me off track. For all those journals you use, yeah. Well, I have one journal at the moment. Well, no, I've got I've got several notebooks happening, but I've only got one journal. This is it. It's all right, Emily, don't worry. Uh, so, yeah. Um, where was I? Oh, yes. I left that gap and I used this for journaling. And then once I'd already started journaling on these pages, uh, because this and this was all together, then I left that. I didn't decide to carry on bullet journaling on there. I decided to start my next day of journaling on there and start my bullet journal on a separate page so in november i was literally whatever i started the page with that's what the page became so this one was bullet journaling this one is journal this is bullet journaling i wanted this all together so this was bullet journaling this became journaling and i carried it on and when i stopped then i started my bullet journaling on the next page then I've got my effing hooray list. I don't normally call it my effing hooray list, but it's YouTube. Let's be family friendly. This is taken from My Favourite Murder, which is my favourite podcast. And I'm not a gratitude girl. It's very twee. It's very, I don't know. It just, it, the idea of, um, oh, let's do a gratitude list is just like it, it just makes me want to vomit i'm sorry but having a hooray an effing hooray every day yes 
this happened today yes i went to costa to go and get my morning coffee and they said hey you've got enough points for a free one do you want one oh yes i didn't have to pay for my coffee today i see your question chloe i will come to you in a second um thank you for remembering to put it in capitals because then i see it and i remember it's there i didn't like the fact that these were all just writing with headers so i started using up some of my stickers because you know me and stickers stickers is the one thing that i will spend crazy amounts of money on because i love stickers so i started using up some of my stickers and this again i just started at the beginning and kept going till i reached whatever end of page i just that's it i wrote i got to the 20th and then i started the next one on the 21st there's no, I do 10 days of this and I do three days of this. Yeah, I can't, I can't be doing that. I get to the end of the page and start a new one. Um, I finally found someone who doesn't write gratitude. I don't feel the need to write what I'm thankful for. Yeah, it, in that sense, it feels very, to me, if you find that you have to write a gratitude list, to me, that's saying, I don't feel grateful for things so i have to remember to feel grateful for things i don't need to remember to feel grateful for things i am grateful for things but having an effing hooray every day even if you've had a really bad day you can go back through your journal and you can go oh my morning coffee this morning was perfect it was just one of those cups of coffees that was everything it was the right temperature it was the right milkiness it was perfect perfect cup of coffee you know the rest of your day might have been complete crap but you've still got my effing hooray for today i started the day with the perfect cup of coffee yes uh so it's just a, like a mood lifter that's what they use it for on the podcast after talking about death and destruction and people getting killed they talk about um their effing hooray is to bring the mood back up you know lighten the mood again do i index yes i do i'll come to that in a second indexing tracking i'm a very systematic planner i feel if you do gratitude you probably have regrets yeah i would agree with you there emily either you have regrets or you're one of these people who is so constantly busy that they're not doing things um rachel the a good bujo app for android is the bujo app i would think um but for you do the do it tomorrow app would be perfect it's called do it brackets tomorrow and it's a black book with a green stripe on it It'd be perfect for you um tracking do i track stuff now yes and no i used to do tracking and stuff ro uh ro evelyn hi nice to see you well we've got so sidetracked now i could be here for the next three hours so grab a seat um i do track stuff but i only track stuff if it's useful so i did mention this yesterday um thanks to rider i did not feel the need to write down all of my audiobooks that i have to read and tick them off as i read them a tracker a typical tracker um i don't feel the need to track when the last time i cleaned the fridge was because if i'm sitting there one day and i think god i don't remember the last time i cleaned the fridge i probably should do that what do I do? I put it in my rapid log and say, I need to. Oh, it is on Android as well. There you go, Rachel. The Bujo Bullet Journal Android app. Karen's put the link there for you. Thank you for that, Karen. Let me screenshot that so I can uh, post it later. Um, yeah, I don't feel the need to keep a tracker of how often I change the beds or anything. I change the beds every week. I know I change the beds every week. Does it add to my journal 
or add to my life in any way to make sure that I change the beds and hoover the floor and wash the sink and wipe out the microwave every single Thursday afternoon. No, it just stresses me out because I sit there thinking, well, it's Friday morning and I haven't changed the beds yet. <laughs> as long as I get to the end of the week and when I do the laundry, I think, where are the sheets? Damn it, I haven't put tape, changed them this week yet. At the very least, I'll go and change them on a Sunday when I do the laundry. Because Sunday is the only day I have where I'm not filming or recording or working or anything. And I can put the laundry on all day. Because my washing machine sounds like it's Boeing 747 coming into land. Yes! Oh, yeah, I normally mention you, Aveline. Aveline, sleep or exercise trackers? No, I don't exercise. <laughs> Exercise trackers would imply that I exercise. Um, I don't need to know how many hours or how many miles I walked the dogs for every day. As long as they're out, they've been out, they're tired and they're happy, that's good enough. Um, sleep tracking, I do track, but there's an app for that, honey. I don't need to write it in my journal. There's an app for that. It does it for me. All I have to do is open the app when, when I go to bed and set my alarm. In fact, I don't even have to do that. I've got one that links to the new iPhone thing where you put in how many hours sleep you want and it tells you what time to go to bed. So my phone pops up and goes, uh, <coughs> it's quarter past one. You probably should think about going to bed at some point soon if you want to get eight hours sleep and still get up at a reasonable time tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah, Evelyn and her ta lists. This is a bit like the effing hooray. She doesn't keep to-do lists. She keeps to-da lists. Because she knows what she needs to do. So all she does is when she's done it, she logs it. So it's a bit like the, it's a bit like the, the calendar here. It's not events that are coming up. It's events that you've already done. Um, she does that on a daily basis. It's her to-da list. This is what I achieved. And I think when you originally posted about it, Aveline, didn't you say to-do lists stressed you out and made you feel like you weren't getting anywhere, whereas to-do lists showed you what you'd actually achieved? I think in a nutshell, that's what you said, uh, which I totally get the logic for. Um, funnily enough, that's very similar to the bu bullet journal. But these are logs. They're not planning. Um, I do keep some trackers, Chloe. I keep, because I take various different meds for various different conditions, uh, I do track my meds. Um, I make sure that I have taken my meds every day. If I don't, I, t I track if I don't take my meds, because it's the last thing I do before I go to bed. I set up my phone app, I switch on my nighttime sounds, my white noise, and then... I get my meds and I take my meds all in one go, job done. Drink half a pint of water, finished. I don't need to track if I've had my meds or not. If I felt like I had to track whether I'd had my meds or not, I would have to remember if I'd had my meds or not. And that's just adding an extra stress point for me. I take my meds. I know I've taken my meds. I very rarely forget to take them. And usually if I forget to take them, it's because I fell asleep. And I know if I've fallen asleep because I wake up with my glasses like this. <laughs> so if my glasses look like this. Or I haven't got undressed and put my pyjamas on. That means I didn't take my meds because I haven't done my nighttime routine. Do I have my nighttime routine tracked out in my journal? No, because I know what my nighttime routine is. Why do I need to do that? I use the same principle as I do with my book of shadows. I don't need to write in every single book of shadows what all the correspondences are for earth, air, fire, water and spirit. I already know them. They're in my head. You know, when you go and start learning A-level French, you don't immediately start by writing out every single thing you ever learned in GCSE French first. You don't need to because you already know it. You start with what you don't know. When you started talking about taking meds, I was like, ah, I didn't take my meds today. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, yeah, sometimes we need a reminder, but you know, my alarm to go to bed is my reminder to do my nighttime routine, which uh, because I'm Aspie, I do things in a very specific order just because I do. It's not for any particular reason or because that's, it's just what I do, you know. Uh, I go out the back, I let the dogs out while they're having a pee. I do what I need to do in the bathroom, clean my teeth, etc, etc. I grab a drink on the way back, let the dogs back in, wipe them off. You know, that I do that in a specific order every day. I don't need to write it down. I don't need to be reminded about stuff that are habits. When you keep moving the stuff day after day after day, it makes you feel bad for not having done it. Tada means it's done. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's why this works, because it's not just a to do list. So you do end up moving things. Um, but one of the things that uh, he talks about is not moving things forward every day. You can and start every day as a clean page. Or you can just leave things on the list until they've been done and migrate them at the end of the month. So anything that didn't get done during the month at the end of the month gets migrated. And you just keep migrating it forward until you've either done it or you don't need to do it anymore. <laughs> I wish my ADD would let me stick to routines. Yeah, I can't. I, I, I automatically create routines. I can't not create routines. I like my routines. I do things in a specific way. It's just the way I am. I have a medication weekly box so I can check whether or not I've taken them. Should I ever be confused? Yes, that's also a good idea. I would forget to refill it or forget what day it was <laughs> or something or forget where I put it, lose it, whatever. Uh, did I Did I answer all your questions, Chloe? Let me just... We're already over an hour. We're going to go on, aren't we? I don't like do gratitude lists either. I'm grateful for a lot of things, but I don't like writing it down. I shall try to show it. Yeah, instead of, oh, I'm very grateful for my friend who, you know, whenever I need something, she's there. Instead of doing that, why don't you just buy her a bunch of flowers or take her out for coffee or call her up and say, you know, I really appreciated how you helped me out the other day because that was that was awesome. I really needed that. You know, don't don't just write it in your book. That doesn't do anything. Just... <laughs> oh. Could you put that podcast in the description below when you can? I listen to Murder Shed. I do love a bit of murder. Oh, my God, Jane. We need a Murderino thread over on um, on uh, Ning. Can somebody start a Murderino thread so we can list all the podcasts? Jane, I've got a list of about 200 podcasts that I listen to. This one is called My Favourite Murder. You'll love it. It's right up your street. Um, just checking to see if I missed anything people said. The mood tracking. Now, I do mood track. Yes, I do mood track. Um, I've got a very simple mood tracker. It's actually an app. It's actually a game. Uh, I can't remember offhand what it's called. I don't use it as a game. I just use it as a mood tracker. You haven't missed me. I'm still here. And we're not even halfway through. Uh, people keep asking me lots of questions that I didn't anticipate. So we're way over already. I was planning to be here for about 40 minutes. And here we are an hour and 10. <laughs> Hi, Rose. <laughs> um, I still use my mood tracker. But I have, it's like a graph thing. And I, the, my mood tracker is basically, do I feel better? Do I feel worse? Or do I feel the same as yesterday? So it's literally just a very long line of, I feel the same. I feel the same. I feel the same. Oh, I feel a bit worse, a bit worse. I feel the same. Oh, better today. Uh, better today. Better today. Feel good. Feel good. Feel good. Feel, oh, feel, don't feel so good. Feel a bit better. Go you know, and it's just literally that. And I've adapted it onto a game. And I just, you know, every more night before I go to bed, that's part of my app thing. I go in and I fill in, you know, did I have or if I've had a mixed day where part of it was good and part of it wasn't because um, some days I'll suddenly get a fatigue hit. 
halfway through the day. I had it today. I ended up going for a nap at three o'clock for about two hours because I just couldn't keep going anymore. Um, but my naps get noted in my sleep tracker. Uh, so if I have something, I usually just put an extra symbol to show that it was a mixed day. Um, and then I, I put my, if I've had a nap, I put it in my sleep tracker. If I've had pain or medication problems or whatever, I put that in my doctor's app. So I use a lot of apps because I don't see the point in putting that in my journal. I don't need to. I don't want to be pulling out my journal in the doctor's office and flipping through it and finding lots of different things that are on different days. I just want to have my phone with me and go, oh, here we go. That's when I had problems with my medication. Oh, here we go. This is what happened when you changed those meds. You know, I don't want to deal with the rest of it because I'm not tracking it for me. I'm tracking it for her. What's the best way to get hold of you? I have a question. Email me, romanysrealm at gmail.com. Or come over and join my website, romanysrealm.org.uk. Link is there. And join up and message me or post on the forums or whatever. Depends how personal it is. If it's not a personal question, just post on the forums. I keep daily joy lists. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Somebody somebody else I saw has adapted my effing hooray to a good shit list. Good shit that happens. <laughs> and I liked that too. Daily joy lists help me combat depression. Yeah, I've seen you post your three things a day on Instagram. That's a good idea. Arwen Lynch, the tarot lady, came up with that. Okay, cool. I missed the coffee chat newsletter vids. You can sign up for my newsletter over on Ning. And I haven't done coffee chat newsletter vids because I haven't been on YouTube for months. I've been moving my website. Coffee chats will be coming back in January. This is my lead up to starting my YouTube channel back up in January. I've been busy. I've been busy doing stuff. All the sign ups. <laughs> No, just everything is on Ning. If you're on Ning, you get my newsletter. If you're on Ning, you can find you can find the page with all my blog stuff and all my Instagram stuff and everything. It's just it's all on Ning. I'm trying to get away from having to sign up to all sorts of things. But you have to give permission to have a newsletter, so you have to you have to click the button and say yes, I want to be in, I want to be in this. <laughs> Oh, right. Your hard work today, Emily. <laughs> um, sketch, obviously. More bullet journaling. More bullet journaling. This is where I got bogged down. Mid-November, I got bogged down with work. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Have you missed me, honey? <laughs> Come over to Ning. I'm always on there. Um I got bogged down with work at this point because Christmas Chronicles was coming up. I was finishing off the... Oh, hey, kitty! <laughs> um, I was finishing off the Halloween Chronicles. I was starting the Christmas Chronicles. November is always a busy month. So as you can see, the journaling didn't really happen. This is a page that I am keeping specifically for working on my big canvas behind me there because I want to do that sometime this month. And I've got lots of little bits of paper with notes written on about what I want to do. And I want to collect them all and put them on here. A la the bullet journal. Stop writing on lots of different post-it notes. Write it in your journal. I'm terrible for writing on bits of paper. This was just some stuff from a magazine that I liked, the illustrator. This is a journal page that I haven't written on yet. And we're back to bullet journaling again. Um, I do put a lot of these funnies and stuff in my bullet in my journal and rather than putting them on my pages I've now started putting them on my bullet journal pages because the way I do my bullet journal I always end up with spaces so I print them out small enough that I can put them on here so this is a little a little bear like Black Friday emails am I right because <laughs> all I've got that day was Black Friday emails 
to the point where I actually put a filter on my Gmail that anything that said Black Friday just went in the bin. <laughs> this is a very, um, this could be called a collection. This is me setting up the Christmas Chronicles. So I set up, I put in all the bits that had to go up. Uh, then I cross them off as I put them up and now I'm crossing them off as I put up my versions of them. So these ones, you can see the planning. I've done the first, the second of the third. I've already put up pictures of my planning for those days. Um, I've done the journaling for day one and day three. I haven't I haven't crossed that one off. Day three I've done as well. So that just means I know what I've done and what I haven't done. And I do a similar thing in my other work journal to track my videos so i know have i downloaded it have i edited it have i um, rendered it have i re-uploaded it have i done any pictures or pdfs that need to go with it and have i put it on the site um, but a lot of stuff that i do now i do live it takes longer but i don't care i would rather spend three hours interacting and chatting and talking with you guys live than four hours filming a video three hours editing it on my own and then you put it up online and that's it it's kind of a it's an anticlimax. then you just wait for comments to roll in and start on the next one i'd much rather be here chatting to you than editing videos so all my classes everything now i do live uh, unless it's a speed paint obviously if it's a speed paint that means it was already done live and then I've edited it down into a video that can go on YouTube because obviously I can't do like 15 hours of speed of painting on YouTube in one go. You, that, no, that's what Twitch is for. Anyway. Uh, this was where I started experimenting with the idea of instead of having, okay, I started this page, this is going to be journaling, this page is going to be journaling, because what you see is that I fell into the trap straight away, it's natural, fell into the trap, these two pages are bullet journaling, these two pages are ordinary journaling, these two pages are bullet journaling, these two pages, oh, well, that's bullet journaling, and I stuck a piece of paper on there, this is notes and bullet journaling, this is collaging bits and pieces. These two pages are journaling. These two pages are bullet journaling. It's automatic. And what I'm playing with now is integrating. That will come up later in the month because I'm going to talk to you about my word of the year for next year and why. Um, but I want to bring everything together. My word of the year next year is unify. And I want everything brought together. That's why I'm trying this out now to see if I can do that successfully and not lose my mind, basically. So instead of doing a sketch and then that's now for sketching, start a new page. I just did my bullet journaling underneath and I did some more. I was sick this day. Super sick. Um meeting notes i need to put a header on there to show that it's meeting notes and what it was for um then we're on to december so december this is where i'm fully bullet journaling so the first thing i did was i went through november and i found everything that hadn't been finished in november and i brought it forward as my monthly task list i was quite impressed that that's all there was um i ended up decorating this page because it's christmas and i'm doing the christmas chronicles i don't normally decorate but then i thought you know what it's my journal i'm integrating let's decorate why not this is my calendar calendar of events again i added some decorative washi tape and a december thing again these are from uh little raven ink this this one is from little raven ink these are just ones i cut out from a bit of stationery this is little raven ink this is scrapbook paper and washi tape and stuff like that my planning pages i'm trying not to over decorate because it detracts for me but i thought it would be nice just for december for the front page of december to be able to find it easily so i put some christmas washi on the end hi romney and chat i'm new to chat but not to the channel hi tilly oh, i think i've spoke to you before i recognize your avatar um 
Now for this, I realised that there are some things that will happen whether I'm there or not. So those are events that should be in my calendar of events. Like, for instance, my mum and dad's 50th wedding anniversary. So although I'm not using this as a scheduler, I am putting in all day events like birthdays or anniversaries or anything like that that's coming up that I know I will have a to do for uh, or I know I will have, you know, I need to know that that's on the 14th because I need to know that, you know, sometime this week I need to send out the card. Right. Um, I've also got pages of special notes down there, um, which they're just special notes. So here we are back to bullet journaling. I started Saturday and Sunday and I sort of thought, well, how, if, how about if I do this page as bullet journaling? But when I get to the end of this page, then, you know, whatever I'm doing next. So maybe I'll end up with bullet journaling and then journaling, bullet journaling, bullet journaling, whatever. Um, it's not quite going like that. You'll see why in a second. These post-it flags are my Christmas Chronicles planning. So those are separate. Uh, each day there's three things to do. So I put them down and I tick them off and that way they show up easily. Um, fairly simple shopping list. This was um, uh, events, notes. Uh, I bought a new, oh, I needed a new keyboard for my Mac. So I bought a new keyboard where I bought it, where I put the receipt and that I changed the large D batteries in the dog light. Now I've got an automatic dog light at the back and I, I don't remember the last time I put D batteries in it. So I thought, right, this time I'll write it down so that next time I'll be able to go back and check when did I last do that? Now I know how long the batteries last because I have no no idea how long the batteries last because I don't remember when I last did it. <laughs> um, list of things that I needed. Again, this is Christmas Chronicles planning, some of it, but integrated with my other planning. Normally I do a Christmas Chronicles journal completely separate. This year it's all in together. So then this one is cards and gifts and I'm not going to show you the back of that page because some of you might be possibly be on there. Uh, so it's just what I do every year with my Christmas cards. I keep the bit that people have written on. Obviously, if they've written on the whole thing, it all goes in my journal. But I keep the bit, the back of the card where people have written on it. I cut out the bit with the message and I put that in my journal uh, at on New Year's Eve at the back of my journal and I keep the fronts of the cards to use as tip-ins the following year so this was a Christmas card last year from Amber uh, I find if I do that I remember who the cards are from instead of just having a load of cards that I don't know what to do with and in five years time I'll just end up chucking them all in the recycling I prefer to do this but I like to put my cards up when I get them because you do, don't you? you? You have to string your Christmas cards up. So I can't use them straight away. So when I take them down, I go through them. And I keep the ones that I want to keep and I put them in the relevant pages or in an envelope in the back of my journal. And then I keep the fronts and I put them in my Christmas box to use next year as tippings. So this is a Christmas list for cards, presents, phone calls and gifts. This is the first day of Christmas Chronicles journaling. I gave you this prompt for free the other day. What do you need most from this Christmas season? That's That was our very first prompt for the year. So as you can see, that's uh, that. Then I've got my Vlogmas list. This is what I was talking about using just your ordinary handwriting as lettering. This is what I do. I just write stuff. That's not true. I start with a baseline and then I write a top line. I draw a top line so I know how big my title is going to be. Then in pencil, I write in what I want to write just to make sure it fits. Then I go over it in pen and then I either fill it in or I put lines in or whatever and I colour it or I add. Uh, quite often I will embellish any curves um, to just make it kind of brush lettering-esque or whatever. 
or you know i'll do shadow things underneath or i'll make it bold and do color behind it or whatever but i do it in my own handwriting i don't do fancy brush lettering i just it's just my handwriting that's what i meant about just using my handwriting for lettering so this is my vlogmas list i've been adding to my vlogmas list as people have given me ideas for what they want to see and we've done bujo changes today so that will get ticked off what was the other one that people asked me to do what was the other one somebody asked me today to do a video on something what was it i've got the one for the dion baker book that's tomorrow and i've got one on procrastination how i what i why i do it and how i stopped uh, because that has been something that's come out of this bullet journal thing i'm 9th of november 5th of december three and a half weeks clean three and a half weeks clean of procrastination that doesn't mean i never procrastinate i'm still putting off doing the washing up i hate doing the washing up but i'll get it done eventually i'll have to because i've run out of dishes but you know when you know you've got to do something you've got to get started and instead of starting it you're sitting here watching youtube videos about how to talk giraffes talk to giraffes you know that kind of procrastination pointless procrastination rather than no i can't be bothered with that i'll do it tomorrow that's conscious procrastination that's you consciously saying i don't feel like doing that today i'll do it tomorrow i don't have time to do that today i'll do it tomorrow that's not procrastinating that's moving stuff to a different day reorganizing reprioritizing whatever when you know you should be doing something right now and you're not doing it you're faffing about tidying up your desk that is procrastination if all your plans start with a cup of tea that is procrastination <laughs> i asked for word of the year but i wasn't sure if you were going to do it since you're doing it in class ah yes thank you word of the year um i did say i was going to do that later uh let's do that the 23rd i've had quite a few odd little questions that are you know what's like uh, what's your favorite pen to draw with what can you recommend a sharpener stuff like that um, i'm going to do a q a video on the 23rd so if you've got little questions like that leave comments below or it, actually leave comments below don't just put them in there leave a comment below that is for the q a video um and i will add it and then I, at some point i will answer you and say added to the q a and on the 23rd i'll do a q a day um should we do a christmas eve should we do a journal with me and word of the year type thing or should we just do a word of the year let's do a christmas eve coffee chat christmas eve coffee chat word of the year and 2019 a nice relaxed one because i'm not doing any new year stuff because i'm off until the until the 7th i'll write a book about procrastination one day yeah procrastinators unite when tomorrow <laughs> well not right now obviously um yeah i'll do word of the year that then cody because we are going to do it in class but we're going to do it in a different way in class it's not going to be just me talking about my word of the year it's you looking at your word of the year so yesterday's um blog was all about you looking at and reviewing your word of this year so that in january we can start with the word of next year but we're going to do it in a specific way it's not just going to be me going oh this is my word of the year it's going to be proper talk class so yes i can do my word of the year here um, and then that'll save me some of the chat time in the class video whoops i've never understood word of the year oh you will anna you will check out yesterday's post in the main in when frogs sing 2018 
it was all about what the word of the year was and there's a journal uh, there's a journal thing a journal exercise uh, about um for old hands who have worked on their year, word, word of the year and done it and sorted it and etc and need to review it there's one for people who started out with good intentions and then went eh. you know about july they gave up uh, and then there's people who have never done it or may possibly have had a word of the year for about 20 minutes last december last january but never really got off the ground with it so you're a you're a section one person you've never understood it you've never done it And then in January, we'll start with the word of the year. Uh, but uh, Ali Edwards, is it? Oh, there you go. Cody's ahead of me again. This is why she's one of my mods. Ali Edwards channel. She's the one who invented word of the year. And the whole concept. It's just setting an intention for the year. Good to see you back on YouTube. Oh, hello, Alan. Long time no see. My word of the year should be a sentence about stop switching planners. Well, it could be. See, this is where doing journal exercises helps. Is it about switching planners? Is that really the problem? Or is it a feeling of being unsettled or not sticking with something or not following through on something? This is why we're doing journaling about it, you see, in class. To find out what our word of the year should be and why and that kind of thing. Uh, what, where was I? Oh yeah, cards and gifts, journaling, vlogmas list. Oh yeah, that's where I got distracted, vlogmas list. Um, from here, I started changing up the way I do things. You'll notice I don't have another effing hooray list for December. Instead, I'm putting my effing hoorays on my page. So this log becomes more of a journal entry. It Again, it pulls away from the planning. I've still got the stuff that I needed to do. I've still got the stuff that I need to remember and I want to note. Like, for instance, this is how it's changed, you see. So Monday, check the story dates again. That was for the Christmas Chronicles because I thought I'd messed up the dates. Add the journal list. I've done that. Vlogmas day three. We did that. We're on day five. Day five. Four more days and I beat my record. Um, and then note. Hair, my, uh, hair. Oh my God. So overdue. Three exclamation marks. Because I had two inches of roots. And then some. That's my Christmas chronicling polar bear. Christmas chronicles polar bear with our planning for the day. And then these notes are what I did to my hair that accidentally gave me silver hair. Because this was not the intention. The intention was bleach the roots, tone it, throw on some blue, done. Uh, and I ended up with silver and it was all shiny and pretty and I liked it. And I thought, hey, uh, I did that by accident. So I'm going to write down what I did. <laughs> so if I ever want to do it intentionally, I know how to do it. Uh, and then my effing hooray for the day. I found a Terry's chocolate orange in Asda that was dark chocolate. The milk ones are available all year, all the time, everywhere. But the speciality ones, like the fizzy ones and the crunchy ones and the nut ones and the dark chocolate ones that I love. The dark chocolate ones you don't find very often. So my effing hooray was I found a dark chocolate orange today haven't seen them in years yes I bought it and then later yes I'm eating it <laughs> that was my effing hooray <laughs> uh, I also made a note that there was football tonight now this was in a VIP note actually uh, football tonight Port Vale versus Stoke which is basically the two local teams that's the local league team and the local big league team um port vale versus stoke and port vale at port vale ground i live literally four minutes from port vale ground i am literally around the corner 
You know when people say something is around the corner? Port Vale Football Ground is around the corner. If you leave your house on a football day, you cannot come back until half past seven at night because there are no parking spaces. Um, so <laughs> I had to put a note to make sure that I came home early enough to get a parking space. What are your thoughts on planner anxiety? Oh, you know what? I'm going to write that down as a suggestion for... Let me grab a pencil. Planner anxiety. Planxiety. In general, my feeling is if you have planxiety, you're doing it wrong. Planning and organising shouldn't give you anxiety. If it does, you're doing it wrong. Because the whole point of planning and, planning and journaling and writing and, and organising is to avoid anxiety. So if your planner is giving you anxiety, you're planning wrong. Not as in you're doing bullet journaling wrong or you're doing the 47 folder method wrong or whatever. You're doing it wrong for you. Your brain is effectively telling you, yeah, these skinny jeans, they look great, but they are not comfortable. You should not be wearing these, girl. They might look great if you're going out dancing for the night, but when you have to sit in the car all day, sweaty Betty, you don't want to be wearing these. You know, that is what your brain is telling you when you've got planner anxiety. <laughs> you're, not, you're not doing what's right for you. Dark chocolate's my fave. Yeah, me too. Oh, one of the, what, what is it? Bourneville does dark chocolate with rum in it. Oh my goodness me. Best chocolate ever. I started a Millie bullet journal and I'm actually logging my journaling. Excellent. Well, that's good because especially for you, because with your ADHD, you get very distracted. Not only do you get distracted by general life, you get distracted by your own brain. So I have a thought, I write it down. I have a thought, I write it down. I have a thought, I write it down. At least then, even if you don't get around to journaling at some point, you'll look at your list and go, oh yeah, I was going to journal about such and such. I'll go and do that now. Yes, you are. I don't know what that was about. Sorry, Alex, I missed that one. I've done that too, yeah. That's what this is about. Writing down, oh, I need to journal about such and such. I can hear the cheering row. Oh, the football. Yeah. Football drives me insane. I hate football. And it was even worse last night because the, the Port Vale fans, for the most part, they're young lads and old blokes. They're like kids and old blokes. The Stokies are the lads. And last night it was bedlam. There was so much screaming and shouting and roughhousing and you know the noise that all football hooligans make and normally we don't have that you know we have kids running up and down with their footballs and old blokes walking back back from the match going oh that was a good goal that oh yeah you know we don't have yobbos running up and down the road screaming the head off and last night we had the yobbos out and it was not fun what is the 47 folder method that I haven't heard of? Oh, it's the Steve Kobe one, isn't it? Getting things done. You have like lists of stuff that you're going to do someday that will never get done. And it's basically just lists, lists and lists and lists and lists and lists. And then you have folders that you organize your lists into. And there are 47 of them. And I, I at that point, I was like, yeah, that's way too many I'm far too lazy to have 47 labelled folders. That's not going to happen. Completely agree. I have YouTube planner anxiety when I watch these setups and just do me. Um, other people's setups don't give me anxiety. Other people's setups made me make me facepalm a lot. Oh, it's David Allen. Thank you, Virginia. David Allen, not Steve Covey. Which one is Steve Covey's method? He's the one that's... Um, He's the brain dump proponent, isn't he? Your brain is for doing and thinking, not for storage. I look at other people's YouTube videos on planners. 
sometimes just to make myself feel better about what I'm doing because I know what I'm doing is for me. If that makes sense, I don't know. The seven habits. Thank you, Murph. Steve Covey is the seven habits of really successful people or something. Number one being get up at 5 a.m. I was like, yeah, that's pff, that's not happening. I don't think I read past chapter one in that book because he wanted me to get up early. And I'm like, no, I'm not productive at 5 a.m. Why would I get up at 5 a.m.? At 5 a.m. my brain wants to be asleep. My brain naturally wakes up some between, somewhere between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Depending on how much work I've been doing or how much sleep I've had or how the quality of my sleep. And I, when I wake up, I have my coffee and I start work. And I work for my eight hours however long that takes, however late in the day that takes me or whether I split it and have a nap in between or whatever. Today I had a nap, so it's half past 10 and I'm still technically working, but that's okay because I've had a nap. I don't need to go to bed anytime soon. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't feel the need to get up at 5 a.m. in order to feel successful. You know, do 70 things before breakfast. What's wrong with doing 70 things before dinner? I'm late in the day. What's wrong with making sure you do five things before bedtime? <laughs> oh, that's David Allen too. The brain is... Yeah, the brain... No, that's right. The brain is for thinking, not for not for storage. Yeah. Steve, Steve Covey is the highly successful people one that says get up at 5 a.m. Yeah. I don't do miracle mornings. I don't do mornings. So there's certainly not going to be miracle mornings. A lot of planner girls have tried the KonMari method. Have you tried anything like that? Uh, what, you mean like um, the the whole, if it doesn't bring you joy, don't do it? For me, actually, um, the bullet journal book, Ryder Carroll me mentions KonMari, and he says that her method is somewhat similar to what he envisaged as the bullet journal. If it doesn't, if it's not useful, if it's not practical, if it doesn't add anything to your life, if it doesn't bring you joy, then it doesn't go in your journal. It doesn't belong there. It's a distraction. It's clutter. There's a lot of very a lot of similarities. I read the book. I never did it. I'm a hoarder. I don't feel the need to be minimalist. I don't know why I don't feel the need to be minimalist, but I don't. I could quite happily live in a junk shop. You have a quadrant to prioritise everything. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the ABCD a, method. Um, important and urgent. Urgent but not important. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. The stuff you used to do at work. Honestly, if it sounds like something that HR would have given me, I'm not interested. You just joined Ning. Awesome, Emily. See you over there. Use the forum. Use the coffee lounge. Have a chat with us. I had whoa. <laughs> I had to read that book for school and I hated it. It made no sense to me. Which book? The the seven methods of highly creative people. Or highly successful people. The problem with books that tell you how to be successful is that they're basing their how-to on what they deem success is. For me, if I got up in the morning, my dogs are still alive when I go to bed, I'm still alive when I go to bed, I haven't burnt the house down, I haven't destroyed anything, I haven't broken anything, I didn't get lost or murdered, and I've managed to do some work in between times, I've had a successful day. What do you count as success? You know, do you do you feel like success for you is having more than you need, having a, a big house to live in, or being able to afford a cleaner twice a week, or having a Mercedes, having lots of money in the bank, having a savings account that's in the triple digits. You know, if that's your level of success, maybe one of those books will be good for you. But I have yet to find a book that tells me how to be successful at just 
staying sexy and not getting murdered, frankly. That's why I listen to the My Favourite Murder podcast. <laughs> Stay sexy, don't get murdered. That's my objective in life. I appreciate your bluntness. Well, I'm Aquarian, I can't help it. I think it, I say it, that's my way. Ten points. Ten house points, if you know where that saying comes from. Uh, oh my god, chat just exploded. I'm not an early morning person either, yeah. There was a beep again, but this time it was shorter. I noticed that they're in the replay too. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry, I, I can't help you. I, I can't hear it. So if I can't hear it, I don't know what it is. I don't think it's me. Maybe it is. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> You're just going to have to ignore the beep, okay? Recycle on Wednesdays. Oh, no, I recycle on Sundays. Because my bin man comes on Monday morning at the crack of dawn. So Sundays. Saturday is clear out day. Sunday is empty the bins and recycle day. Forget getting things done before breakfast. My goal is just to get things done before I die. <laughs> yes! Oh my God, I have to write that down. Now you see, this is what your bullet journal is for. This is what your bullet journal is for. Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? Yes, yeah, Wednesday today. Oh, I haven't written anything. Quote. Quote from Vlogmas. Forget getting things done before breakfast breakfast my goal is to is just is just to is to just get ugh brain come on things done before I die that is an excellent line. I love that. Recycle on Wednesdays. YouTube. You will get quoted on that many, many, many times in the future. I love that. I can't even pronounce minimalist, let alone be one. I can't spell it. I can't write it down. I get, I get to the, I get to the point where I have so many up and downs. I don't know where the A comes. I need to get Ryder's book. Yes, if you don't have uh, Audible, sign up for the free trial and you can get the, the audio book free. I'm also a hoarder. I'm not really a hoarder. I just don't feel the need to be minimalist and chuck things away. You know. I mean, I don't keep crap and I do have to, I do have to rein in my hoarder tendencies. Twice a year, I have a complete studio clear out. Otherwise, I would just have piles and piles of Amazon boxes everywhere um, because somehow they never make it to the recycling bin. But I don't, I don't feel the need to have everything perfectly appointed and, and that would give me anxiety, actually, having everything too tidy i'd feel like i couldn't make a mess and i am naturally a messy person i'm also a hoarder and don't want to be a minimalist but conway did help me get rid of things that reminded me of toxic relationships with people or bad memories yeah again i don't have a problem with that i can appreciate why it might help other people but for me i'm like you know as soon as they're an ex they're an ex for a reason that's it been done you can still apply his method to that row but i found it to be a lot of work whose method to what sorry that got out of sync so i don't know what you're talking about murph i don't think that it's you it's just i'm noticing it because i'm tired and i'm sensitive to high-pitched sound oh yeah high-pitched sound drives me crazy as well if it was beeping at me it would bug me too but i can't I would help you if I could, but I can't because I'm not hearing it. I don't know where it's coming from. 
Covey's method. <sighs> if it sounds like something HR want, would give me, I don't want to do it. It's boring. Moving on. <laughs> We're going to be here at midnight, guys. I'm just going to do a quick bullet journal session. Isn't it a good job I split it into two and didn't do this yesterday? Because we'd have been here. We'd still been here now. Uh, yeah, so I've started putting my effing hoorays in my book on the day instead of having a separate list. Uh, this is all um, Christmas Chronicles. I've just got some journaling to write up in there. Michael Kane. This is today's Christmas Chronicle journaling, which I've done. For some reason, I don't have a to-do list today. Why don't I have a to-do list for today? Because I got up, I did Twitch, and then I did some journaling and I went for a nap. I, didn't, I haven't had a to-do list today. I haven't had anything I needed to do today, so I don't have anything there. So uh, maybe I'll write a to-da list. Things I did achieve, even though I didn't need to. <laughs> I took the seven habits class twice through work and I still don't do it. <laughs> yeah. I think if you have to take a class to learn how to do a planning thing, it's probably not going to work. Glad you're back. You're going to catch up on all your live shows. Might join Ning. You better. Ning is my site. It's, um, it's everything. It's my classes. It's my Ning forum it's my um twit all my twitch is on there all my youtube is on there it's just basically a website that's interactive that you can come over and and chat with me yeah i don't know what the hip high pitch sound is can't help you sorry i don't know it must be youtube because it never ever happens on zoom and i use zoom way more than i use youtube so it's got to be youtube it doesn't happen on twitch it doesn't happen on zoom it only happens on youtube Therefore, it's YouTube. So there you go. That's my... I finally reached the end of my journaling. Oh, my God. Now, I've also got... Because I'm doing Christmas Chronicles and I'm trying to get a little bit ahead, I haven't got any personal journaling in yet. Uh, I've, I've just got Christmas Chronicles journaling. But that was what I was going to spend this evening doing, was doing some personal journaling. I've got my photos printed out at the back here. Uh, I've... Cut, cut some Christmas cards out to use as tip-ins from last year. Uh, I've got snippets and photos and clips and things. Uh, I've got some stickers in the front here. I've got Christmassy stuff in the front here. Uh, yeah. And at the back, I have my index. So, to the person who asked, do you use an index? Yes, I do. Uh, as I integrate things more, I don't think I will need to use an index like this. I think what I may start doing, and I may do this at the end when I'm when I finish this journal, because I'm almost at the end now. I've only got about 20 pages uh, and we're doing Christmas Chronicles. So that's going to be eaten up in a week. Um, rather than I don't need to know when my daily logs are. There's only two months worth of stuff in here. I can flip through and go. Okay, this is December, the oh, November the 20th. Where's December? Here's December. That's where it starts. Okay, so we're here. Uh, I don't need to do it because I don't have a big, thick, chunky book. I think if I was using a full Loish term, I might need to, but I don't feel I need to write down where my daily logs are, where my sketches are, which pages are journaling. This is not adding to my bullet journal. However, that note I wrote down about where I put the receipt for my iMac keyboard, that I need to know. The note I wrote about how I accidentally managed to turn my hair silver and what I used, that I need to be able to find. So I think I will do that kind of stuff and then I will just have it split. So November, my calendar is on page one. December, my calendar is page 23 to 24. And then... Um, I might do important stuff. I mean, I've put my forward planning here three to four, but I don't really need it because I've got a sticky label here showing me where my forward planning is. So I don't really need it in my index. What I need in my index is stuff that I need to be able to find again. 
there's no point knowing that I've got a daily log on pages 3, 4, 7, 10, 11, 19 and 21 to 22 for November if it doesn't tell me what's on those daily logs. What I need is to say, uh, OK, daily log, page seven, I've got a note about the dogs having their vaccinations or something like that. You know, stuff that's important. Uh, so, for instance, instead of in fact, I could do this now for December, couldn't I? December calendar, because I haven't done any indexing for December. And that's why daily logs. I don't think I need that. I don't need to know where my daily logs are. I need to know important stuff that's in them. So I'm literally going to start at the beginning. I know that my calendar of events is tw page 23, 24. That's here. Is there anything on here that I need to know? Yes, there's my purchase of the keyboard. iMac keyboard notes. Page 25. Anything else? Anything else? I don't need to know that Vlogmas is on page 27. If I get far enough back here that I can't find it, I'll just put a sticky note in it. Because when I get to the 24th, I won't need to use it anymore. I won't need to know that it's there. However, next year I might want to check what, vlog, what I did for Vlogmas. So Vlogmas I will write down, actually. Vlogmas 2018. I don't need to know where it is now. But next year, when I come to this journal, I'll want to know where it is. Hair notes, page 28. Silver hair, how to, page 28. Now, quotes, quotes are the kind of thing that I would want to find because I might want to reference it again. So I did that before. I think I did that in, in uh, November somewhere. I've had a, a quotes. So I'll put quotes and then I'll put page 32. has got a quote on. And then the next time I put a quote, instead of writing it again, I'll just put quotes and I'll put the next page that has a quote on. Because I, I, I probably will only have four or five quotes. It won't be that much of a job to go and check four or five pages. If I had lots of them, I might. But, you know, if I had lots of them, I'd have a whole page of quotes and then I'd know where they were. Uh, so that's it. That's my, that's my index. And I think that index will work better than this. Because this doesn't really tell me anything. There is nothing here that is useful for me to know about except the book sizes notes on page four. That's the only one that I would need to know. So I'm going to put a star next to that so I know that it's an important one. Um, the Francine Lang, I'll put that there with a star. Christmas Chronicles list, I don't need to have that later. Large canvas notes, that one I'll need. So of all the stuff I did in November, I actually only needed to note down those three things. So my calend my index, I think this will be better because I don't need to know what pages my journaling is on or what pages my daily logs are on. I can flip through and see that. But I do need to know, damn it, I wrote that about that receipt for my iMac in my journal because I can't find it. Where did I put it? Oh, here we go. iMac keyboard notes, page 25. That's going to be better for me. I'm just in time to say goodbye. Yes, you are, Susan. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But you do have two hours all about my bullet journal to catch up on because I was meant to do a short one today and it just expanded because I got may way more questions than I thought I was going to get. But... Um, I hope that helps some with explaining 
uh, how I'm adapting the bullet journal thing. And as you can see, it's an ongoing process. I'm still playing with it to figure out how best to do it. And I'm now at the point where, yeah, I'm doing the Christmas Chronicles stuff separate because that makes sense so that I can photograph it without having personal journaling on it. I've just got the Christmas Chronicles stuff. So I can take a photo of this page. It will all be Christmas Chronicles stuff, not personal journaling. Um, this has personal journaling, but it's in an envelope. So I'll just show them that. This page, I will probably do personal journaling. And once I start doing personal journaling here, I'll do the full page as personal journaling. Just so that when I'm doing flips and stuff, it's easier then if I want to say, well, I don't want to show that page. I'll just clip it together and say, well, those two pages are clipped together because that's personal journaling. So that's purely practical. Um, but what I want to do is more of this stuff where I actually just, you know, I maybe start a page doing bullet journaling, but then I do a picture. What is the Christmas Chronicles? The Christmas Chronicles is my annual Christmas class where we do daily planning prompts to get us through Christmas in one piece without killing anyone and Christmas journaling prompts to get us through um, all the uh, Christmas craziness without killing ourselves. And as well, I tell 10 stories about Christmas. Cody's posted the link. Thank you, Cody. It's your birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, Sue. I hope you've had a good day. Oh, taken out to lunch. Lovely. That's, and, uh, that's always a good day. Any day you get taken out for lunch is a good day in my book. <laughs> but if it's your birthday, that's even better. So I think on that note... Happy birthday, Susan, and let's wrap it up because we've been do two hours, guys, two hours. And then I'll get loads of people thumbing down my video because it's too long because they have the attention span of a gnat. I do have to give a shout out to my three little friends who keep thumbing down on my videos. You're so cute. You think I care. That's what makes me laugh. Um... Great video. Can't wait for more. Thank you. I will be doing one tomorrow. Now, tomorrow I'm teaching four till six. So. Christmas Chronicles should be earlier because I'm doing a I'm doing a book review tomorrow. This one. Book reviews are always really quick, so I will probably do that tomorrow earlier in the day, like sort of lunchtime ish. And then when I finish class, I can concentrate on going and finishing off stuff for class and decompressing after teaching. Watch the first hour tomorrow while I catch up on the washing up. OK, thanks for joining us, Eve. It's, it's nice to see you and everybody. But, uh, you know, usually Eve, Eve is uh, one of those people who catches up later. We never quite mesh with, our, with, with uh, despite both being in the UK, we never quite mesh with our time zones somehow. You're loving the live vids, keep them coming. I have decided, I decided this for my class about six months ago. I teach all my classes live now. Now that doesn't mean that you have to be there for the class live, okay? Um, if you want to be there for the class live, you can. Uh, but I record everything so you can watch it later if you want to, which... For those of you who like to skip through the chatty bits is useful um, so you can watch it later at your convenience if you want to uh, or, or i put up a timetable of when all the classes are so that you can integrate it into your own calendar um, i've got several people who actually are at work on the at the four till six class that I do on a Thursday but what they do is they book time in a separate room so they can go and do the class and work on personal stuff and kind of work while they're watching um, I've got other people who just decide to take a long lunch or take the afternoon off or whatever I need to find out what is making my neck do that something is rubbing my neck and I don't know what it is and I'm getting very self-conscious about it because I keep 
picking at it. The live class is fun. It is fun because what we do, it's interactive. So if, if you want to be on camera, you can be on camera and talk to me like this. You can be on camera and show your stuff like this. You can be on camera and do both if you wish to. Uh, you can not be on camera and just be on audio and chip in with chat. Um, Rachel does that. She has her her uh, app on her phone and she talks to us on her phone, but she watches us on YouTube because... Um, oh, Dory will be here. Hi, Dor. Dor needs to see it on the big screen. She's my oldest viewer, I think. She turned 90 this year. 90? Who would skip the chatty bits? That's the best part. <laughs> yeah, I know. You do like you do all like to play let's bait to row and see how far off, off topic we can get her. I, I am aware of that and I fall for it every time. But, you know, interacting and being able to chat with you guys and talk about whatever comes up. That's what I do. I trained as a teacher in a classroom, interacting with and guiding and talking to a group of 30 people. I never wanted to be the person who just sat and made videos all the time. I'm not a video maker. I'm an art artist and a teacher and I like sharing what I do and I like helping other people. I like interacting with other people. I like teaching stuff. I like giving people ideas. That's what I do. And I, I can't do that in the way I want to in pre-recorded videos. And I get bored. And I get behind. And one of the reasons that I stopped doing YouTube was because I had 15 different videos ready and recorded and I didn't want to ed edit any of them. I didn't want to do the editing. I hate editing. I hate vlogging for the same reason because I forget, you know, I vlog like 10 minutes and then I forget for the rest of the day and I end up doing a catch up at the end of the day. I admire people like Bailey J who can do a vlog every single day. But I can't do it. I don't want to do it, if I'm honest. And I certainly don't want to edit it. And the absolute last thing I want to be doing is the last thing before I go to bed. And before I can even think about going to bed, I have to do that. Or it has to be the first thing I do when I get up. No, I don't want to be editing videos. I hate editing videos. I like doing audio files, which is why you have the Christmas stories and the Christmas chronicles, because I love to write stories. I love to tell stories. And if you're interested in stories about where tinsel comes from or why there is an angel on top of the Christmas tree or all about the real St. Nicholas or anything like that, that's what Christmas chronicles is about. And they're all audio files, so you can download them on and listen to them on your headphones <coughs> while you're out or whatever. You don't have to be tied to your computer. Don't ask about the pudding. It's a state secret at this point. Figgy pudding is a state secret. Excuse me. That's definitely a sign that it's time to stop. Oh, it's Santa class evening for you, isn't it? Yes. Avelyn, go and check up The Art of Jeremy Hartman on Instagram. I meant to tag you earlier. He's been doing Santa classes. It's Krampus Day as well, yes. Oh, I might have to do a Krampus. I love Krampus. Krampus is awesome. <laughs> Put your shoes out. story is Krampus today isn't it is it is the story today Krampus it might be actually where's my list it's confusing me a bit because the Christmas Chronicles list isn't in December uh, December the 5th no it's Robin Redbreast today it's not Krampus Krampus is on December the 17th. I should have thought about that and done it today, shouldn't I? I should have swapped it round, but I didn't occur to me. Anyway, stopping there, 
thank you for joining me. Uh, this stream has been going for two hours. It wasn't meant to be two hours long, but if you haven't been here for two hours, then you've got some catching up to do. So do enjoy. Thank you for joining me tomorrow. I will be doing a quick book review and it will be quick on S. Dion Baker's Draw Your Day. So if that's something that interests you, keep an eye out. I will do it earlier in the day, but of course it will be available for you if you want to watch it later. And uh, what's the next one after that? I think the next one is Procrastination. I might put that off till next week. But um bum See what I did there? Um, no, Procrastination is the one after that, I believe. Where's my Vlogmas list? Oh, it's here. Um, yes. On Friday. So tomorrow is Dion Baker. Friday, I'm going to talk about procrastination, why I do it and how I stopped. And if you have any other ideas for uh, video that you'd like me to cover uh, for Vlogmas, leave them down below. Also, if you've got any Q&As, any questions, sorry, for my q and I'm going to do a QA and a on the 23rd. Um, but I've got all of this chunk to fill up. Oh, well, actually, I don't know why I even wrote that in pencil. Planxiety. Let's have a coffee chat about planner anxiety on Saturday. I'm quite busy on Saturday. I've got a USK Christmas dinner and then I've got a class and I've got to do a vlogmas. So I'll probably be a late one. It'll probably be this sort of time of day again for that one. But yeah, if you've got any more ideas, I have another 11 days to fill up. Leave, leave suggestions below and also questions for my Q&A video on the 23rd. Thanks for joining me. See you all again tomorrow. Day six. Ooh. <laughs> Night, guys.